Okay, so you guys should get a blip saying we're recording. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Diane from Change Food. Um, just really briefly, Change Food is my nonprofit. We work to build a healthier food system for people, animals, and the planet. I also um, founded East Village Neighbors. Oh, now we're, so I found the East Village Neighbors. I found an East Village neighbors East Village during. Somebody has to uh, mute themselves, otherwise a lot of echo. Yeah, no, I I muted her. Um, founded the East Village Neighbors Group to deliver food during the height of the pandemic. That evolved into co-founding the East Village Neighbors Community Fridge with Sarita and Edie, who are also on here, and then Sarita's husband, Caesar. Um, so there are too many of us. We tried this last time. It, it took too much time. It, unfortunately, there's too many for all of us to introduce ourselves live. So please put in chat who you are, where you're from, you know, the fridge you're associated with. And if you have a question or an issue you want us to get to, put it in the chat. The other thing that I'd like to do is I have questions to ask so we can have an open discussion, but raise your hand. And if you don't know the raise hand button, message Sarita. Just message, message, message one of us and we'll explain how to do it. It should be right. If you're on your laptop, it should be right at the bottom. Um, and that way I'll call people in order. Otherwise it's too much people jumping in on top of each other. So the first thing I want to talk about is vandalism and theft. Um, we've had two experiences with the Chelsea fridge and the East Village fridge. So Leah, do you want to sort of lead us off with what happened with you and what you think? And then Sarita, you can sort of pop in or Edie pop in. Yeah, um, so I'm Leanne. I'm from the Chelsea Fridge um, in Manhattan. And I guess two weeks ago, uh, someone came and, you know, there were guests at our fridge and someone came and smashed uh, the glass door of our fridge and uh, like pushed over our cupboard. So it got broken. So it was clearly an intentional vandalism. Um, and then we found out that the door was actually the only thing that was broken. The rest of the fridge was fine. So we ordered a new door for that fridge. Um, and then we ordered a new cupboard last, last Tuesday. Then they both got stolen um, by people in a moving van the, the next day. <laughs> um, so we've kind of, our fridge and our volunteers have gone through like a lot <laughs> uh, just, and our guests too, I guess. Um, so right now we are of course going to continue serving people with our fridge and cupboard we're just kind of trying to brainstorm ways to secure things so you know i've talked to the east village fridge on um, the overthrow vegan fridge in the city too about kind of how to like lock things down while still being able to like use our space in a good way um and i know that a lot of people have been saying like oh it's people who like don't want this stuff in the community like people who are anti people feeding people and i actually think at least for the first incident, I do think it was someone who was mentally ill who was trying to like get their frustrations out. And then I think for the second situation, it was people who were like, cool, free fridge and cupboard. We want this. So I obviously can't know for sure, but I do think, uh, I think the issues were unrelated and it wasn't, I don't think it was people who don't want us serving food in our community, but I know that for other people, that's not the case for their vandalism, so. Oh, Diane, you're muted. Sarita and Edie, what happened with the East Village Fridge? And then I want any, anybody else to jump in who might have had any vandalism problems. Yeah, so we've had um, a few um, issues as of late. Um, one was pretty major where our fridge was pretty much almost like someone brought a weight and uh, tried to destroy it and totally dismantled like our, our pantry from from where we have it fixed and like Leah was saying we actually like we had our, our fridge our first fridge last year a year ago toppled over just like by some drunk person in the middle of the night that wasn't a big deal then we got another fridge and we actually our fridge and pantry are bolted to the ground pretty securely so this was like very intentional um over the past couple of weeks we figured out who's done it and it's not I shouldn't say intentional in the sense that it, it, it is someone who's severely mentally ill in our neighborhood and they have done this to the fridge, like a couple of minor other things to the fridge um, post that. We are missing a cupboard door now too. Uh, and it's, 
it's one of those things where it's, you know, I, I like to other people to talk and share if they've had the same scenario. It, it's a tough place to be in though, because we've got like a community who really has a sense of responsibility and ownership of this fridge. And they want, you know, a lot of people are popping up on Facebook groups saying, can we invest in cameras? And we have all of that. It's, you know, it's, it's the, I, I own a restaurant the fridge is right in front of the restaurant. Right. So it's whether or not, how do you, like, how do you deal with the situation? Do you want someone who really needs help to now have to call the cops on them to do it. so you know at this point we know who's done it um they show up at the restaurant almost every day antagonizing my customers and there's a lot of things going on outside of that um it's just how do we deal with this in a in a in a, in a human way like in a human way i think that this is where we're at right now thanks rita so mike thanks, in one, one second mike so for everyone who's just joined us Please say hello and tell us what fridge you're from in the chat. Um, and we are recording. You should have gotten the blip up. So Mike, you have your hand raised. Yeah, so um, that's been a big, a big point of contention uh, for us at the Dorchester uh, Fridge in Massachusetts as well. Um, and we've had conflicting thoughts on how to deal with it. Some people are on the side of, we want to focus mainly on food insecurity and trying to help resolve that issue as best as we Me can too. without getting too far into the realm of dealing with people who have uh, maybe mental health issues or other issues going on in their lives besides food insecurity. And then there's others that want to do as much as they can to help the community in every way possible. Um, so th that's been a, an area of confliction where some people want to focus mainly on what we're here for and others want to extend uh, and kind of like recreate the wheel almost. Um, and I'm trying to just gather those people into services that are already existing rather than us trying to help the, these individuals directly. Um, but we've had similar issues with vandalism uh, from guests, um, and also uh, we've had issues with racism at the fridge. Uh, we're in a very diverse neighborhood, many different cultures, melting pot. Um, so we do unfortunately see a lot of that. Uh, we've had some incidents of um, assault take place at our fridge as well. Um, I don't know if that happens with other fridges, um, but we have had that happen. Uh, so I don't know if I have any like solutions on how to resolve the problem that you mentioned. Um, I think for me personally, I wanna just focus more so on the food insecurity aspect of the work that we're doing. Um, and maybe, you know, other people in this call share similar mindsets. I'll meet myself, thank you. Thanks. I, I want to just jump in and say um, one positive thing. Sorry, I'm Edie from East Village Neighbors Fridge. Um, one positive thing that came out of our vandalism is that um, it was almost served as a huge fundraiser. I mean, we people were so generous in um, helping us, the wanting to give us money to help repair the fridge. Um, of course, our generous sponsors, uh, Sarita and her husband, um, took care of repairing the fridge. So all of that money now we can use to buy um, fresh fruits and vegetables for our fridge. So that is one positive thing that came out of it is that people care so much about it, the fridge and they want to um, keep it going. And they were very upset that um, it was vandalized. So for new folks coming in, just please say hi in the chat. Also raise your hand um, because there's so many of us if you wanna jump in. And Ernst, I just saw your comment about assault cases happening in Brazil. Do you wanna share what, what's happened there? Uh, yeah, um, this assault case I think happened uh, three or four years ago when in the first year of the fridge, this fridge, uh, you know what, Ernst? Ernst, we're, we're having trouble hearing you. I don't know if you if it'll help if you turn off your camera. If the sound will be better. Uh, is that better? Oh, I see. Just, just a second. It's a little bit better. Um, microphone is not great. Does that? Does anyone else? Well, well, Ernst tries to fix his his uh, audio. Does anyone else have any experiences or any solutions? I think Mike brought up a really good point. 
I think we did this in our fridge, which was not dealing with the mental health issues ourselves, unless one is extremely qualified and part of a, but to direct people to social services. I think, I don't know if we ever did. We were going to post places people could call on the fridge if they were having challenges and not that that person might, but somebody else at the fridge might. I mean, has anyone else had issues with, uh, like Mike mentioned the, the racism issue, like how do you deal, like if you're at the fridge and people start fighting? I'll, I'll jump in again very quickly, just that we had an issue with one of our older um, fridge users who's in a, the senior center. And so um, I contacted the senior center and they spoke with him and that seems to have been a better, he, uh, we haven't had a pro problem with him as far as I know again. So that's one way you can do it is just, you know, if it's people are in um, special housing situations, sometimes they have support. Okay, great. So, well, our next question is about problem people. So first, let's talk about, and I think Leah has a story on this, about um, the public and, and challenges we might be having with people at the fridge. Leah, what's happened with you? I know East Village has had problems too, but what's happened with you and how have you dealt with it? Um, how have I dealt with it? I am still trying to figure that one out. But um, so we have a guest right now who I met maybe like a month or so ago and she seemed really nice. She seemed really like excited about getting fresh food. And then, you know, she wrote an angry email to our host about like, you know, she went to the fridge at 10 PM and because she was there, she's Latina. She was like, she was like, no one came with food. So you guys are racist against Latinas. And I like looked at when we dropped off food and it was like, you know, once we're dropped off, once we're done with food for the day, it's because we just don't have any more food to give. It's certainly not because there's Latino women at the fridge. So I like wrote her back and explained how everything works. And then she basically just kept email. She must have been sent like over 60 emails at this point. You know, I've heard that she's exposing herself. You know, she'll pull her pants down and try to sit on the vegetables. She'll yell at people. She'll like videotape people trying to catch us being racist which we're not doing that so it's fine but she you know she started actually i'm actually in new jersey right now because she's been walking around the streets asking people if they know where i live uh so you know i did it i didn't really want to get the cops involved but one of the emails she wrote she took credit for the vandalism which i actually don't think she did. I think she thinks she bullied us into closing. I don't think she has any idea that anything broke or that anything got stolen. So I did have to tell them like, you know, there is a person who took credit for this. Um, of course, the cops basically said, you know, like, once she threatens to kill you, then you can come back to us. So I was like, that's cool. Uh, and yeah, I just, I just don't know what to do about her at this point. Uh, and I actually emailed Edie about this because I was like, so she's now that she knows that our uh, volunteers and guests are going over to East Village. She was, she's been heard saying, I'm going to go over to 12th Street and shut them down. So I am kind of at a loss because it is a weird situation. I don't know who to talk to that's been through something this specific. And she's very much at the point where she's not going to accept any help. Um, I don't, I kind of don't know what to do because I would like to not wait until she threatens to kill me. Oh so <laughs> I'm not sure what to do at this point, if anyone does, has any ideas. Does anyone have any ideas? And Mike, I really apologize. I put your hand down because I thought it was from before. Um, Mike, do you want to, Todd, I see you physically have your hand up so you can talk. Yeah, yeah, back. I was going to comment. I'm, I'm actually a legal aid attorney. So I work with a lot of people over many years with, with mental health issues and, um, it, it very may, well may be that she does harm people or does not harm people. I think that's an important thing to try and figure out because often people are known. They're known to providers, they're known to outreach workers. And, and sometimes people are, and I'm not, you know, that's why I say reach out and find out in the community because a lot of people use um, aggressive behavior as part of because they're very paranoid in order to... Um, keep people at a distance. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be concerned about your personal um, health and, and well-being, but I think it's important to reach out to the, to the outreach community, community workers in the area. They probably almost certainly know her and would let you know if, if she's really just all about bark and not bite. I'm not sure if that's comforting or not. 
I, you know what, Jennifer also put in the comments, I feel like a social worker partnering with the, with the fridges might be a good alliance. That's something for everyone to think about. If you're concerned or you are having problems, maybe try to find a social worker who would want to volunteer their time and maybe volunteers could have their number and call when it happens to bring the social worker out to do, you know, what Todd also said, and then also contact agencies to see if she's known. Um, at, welcome to the new people who came, just so you know, say hello in the chats. So we know who you are and what fridge you're from. And also raise your hand if you'd like to contribute. Nicole just said, how do we find a social worker? Todd, do, do you wanna, do, can you answer that? Well, you know, there, there are outreach teams. I don't know of, I'm in Boston. So we, we have, I know the Boston outreach teams. I, I, I think, you know, I, even the police will know the outreach teams, believe it or not. They will know who they call when somebody is acting out. Hopefully the police are, are being, um, smart about this and not intervening themselves um, because it is a sensitive issue and th that's why you have people who are who are really well should be well trained and and in the community to to work with this kind of issues because when people are in our community um that's that's life you know and and we have to figure out should we be concerned or not but i would i would talk to anybody in the area even call up the local uh you know, mental health, uh, if there's, if you just Google local mental health outreach, there's usually almost always street outreach teams that are in the area. Jennifer, I see your hand. Wait, you just put yourself on mute. There we go. Um, so I'm a psychologist, not a social worker. So I, I could say that sounds like a lot of mental health issues when somebody sits naked on a vegetable, but um, I am not great with the programs in the city. So, but I would say social workers lean heavily to joining things like free fridges in communities. So I would guess that if you have a huge email group or Facebook group for your fridge, you probably have some social workers already in your community and they at least know the right numbers or places to call or contact to, to make those connections. Great. Yeah, this is actually the host of our fridge. Uh, she's the director of uh, Xavier Mission. She she is a social worker. Uh, so she's been kind of helping me. It's just, this one is just really persistent. Uh, it's just like, we know like kind of who to call and it's just, this woman's also like very elusive. Like it's hard to, it's kind of hard to explain. Like, I don't know. I guess just, it's just more like a, like mentally and like, it's, it's hard when it's, I guess it's hard because she's, she'll send an email being like, the fridge is so amazing. It saved me. I'm eating so healthy. I don't have to take my medication. And then like five minutes later, she'll be like, shut it down. So like, obviously it's mental health issues. It's just kind of hard to, you know, she's very resistant to any help or, you know, she thinks everything's perfectly normal. So it's, I, I guess it's, it's just a little, it's very complicated. I think. It is. It is. Nicole. Um, hi, um, I work with Leah at the Chelsea Community Fridge. I just want to add that she's not just terrorizing Leah. She also stalk our other volunteers and guests. Like she take the name and try to find out like where people live. And, um, you know, she document when they go to the fridge. And also like she would sit across from our fridge and spimming for like hours. So it's, it's not just to Leah. It's also like she's harassing other people. So... <laughs> Yeah, we really don't know what to do with her. I mean, the fridge is broken right now. So we're just hoping maybe she'll get bored and forgot we exist. But, you know, if, if she comes back when we um, when we fix everything, like we really don't know what to do with her because she makes everyone very uncomfortable. I guess my suggestion would be to contact a social services agency to ask them their opinion and describe all this to them because I we do have a psychologist here, but I don't know if any of us are really qualified enough. We had a person, I, I, I think it got, like we sort of dealt with it when I started demanding photos of the people who were selling the food that they, she was claiming were stealing from the fridge. This seems to be way beyond that. Like this is serious. So you guys really should. And somebody, Rachel's put in the comments, NAMI, the National Alliance for Mental Illness, they might have local clinics or something. Because I think, I do know 
there was someone who came to the fridge with his social worker when he was there and he you know was somebody who was a little challenged so I don't know I what, what I would ask everyone is you know if you're dealing with this issue and you come across any suggestions to let us know I will have everyone's emails from registering because I think this will become a problem like if you haven't had this problem yet at some point you will probably um Ernst I see that your hands up do you want to say something and thank you. I want to see if my microphone works this time. Or... Yes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm going to uh, answer, try to share what we had here relating to this. Also, tying with the previous question about salt, I think it's all kind of the same solutions that we had, uh, not really solutions. Um, we did reach out to social workers. We had, um, uh, we had actually, th this fridge in particular here in Brazil, um, had a huge volume so i i think it is not the average fridge so we had like right now we had it has 700 meals a day being served there um it's just a big flow and there was about uh, at the time where this incident happened there was like you know 300 people each person representing a family coming every day so this this is like out of proportions of anything that we planned before we start we started that fridge um, so there are some uh, people who were stealing food um, uh, from the fridge to sell uh, because all of these meals are like super high quality. Um, there were um, um, cases of assault because um, the community start um, managing the fridge. So the 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 houseless folks that are living in the area uh, organized uh, the fridge. So like you know they 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 would stay near the fridge so if any any you know issues happen they would intervene and then in that case i'm talking about people stealing stuff uh because we knew uh who was taking the food people were coming and taking like 30 30 thing, 30 meals and then selling over the other side um like a few blocks away um and so that's when uh one of the houseless folks um uh, magron got stabbed right he got he got stabbed because he was trying to avoid someone to come and take the 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 food um and um and so that's that's the assault incident that was mentioning um and we also had like um several examples as the one of this uh, lady that you're talking about that uh harassing other people by the fridge not letting people take food um um, um and and other sorts of uh, mental mental health issues that uh we had and the the social worker said it was too much for them because there was it was too much it was too much really <laughs> The, and and not because not because they they didn't have the means to do it uh they probably understaffed at the time and they they even turned people to us at some point and us i mean um the the organizer the, the place which is um uh the business owner also so the this fridge is like in front of a bakery so the, the bakery owner became kind of the social worker he's not a social worker he's actually now going to uh, start training in social working because uh, he he mediated all of these conflicts, right? So, what what the solution that was not really a solution, but it kind of happened in this case is that you had a person that was not all the time there, but almost all the time there because he was in the business, so he was already in the business um, and mediated all these conflicts. And a lot of a lot of these things had to do with other other the the disability, you know, mental health. Uh, um, uh, state of a person that sometimes we call disability um, uh, it, it's actually because there's so many other things that are going wrong in that person's lives because they they need so many things and we're talking about mostly housing and food right um, and so it, and I think the, the solution here uh, the problem with this solution of having someone that is a mediator that is constantly all the time there because because the volume of food and people was uh, 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 so big um, the only problem with that, I think, and it's not an only problem, it's a big problem, is that you start getting to some uh, charity um, uh, vibes, right? That's the problem. What happened there is like now we have a mediator that is now, you know, trying to, uh, in, 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 even if implicitly or unconsciously, you know, deciding what is best for the people or saying like, okay, you can have only like this five meals instead of like the 20 you want to get or um when when this happened right when someone was like oh this guy's taking all this stuff and then he would come out and say oh you just like five or whatever and all of this and and he like helped 
and, and it was really him, right? Like there was like a group of 15 people helping there, but the 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 folks, the the folks that were living in the street, they wouldn't they wouldn't talk to anyone else except him. They would only accept even the social right. workers that would come. Um, and so yeah, I think that was the that was the, the the issue is that you had a person that is now overstaffed and then is dealing with that uh, those um, cases case by case all the time. Um, and you, you you getting he helped a lot of people get housing. He helped like forty people get houses. That he sometimes even like paid the houses for folks or you know got jobs. You know a lot of people got jobs that he helped folks get jobs like small jobs that and and so I think. It, it the problems got solved the other thing they did was uh, you know having uh, working hours which is something that we never had want to do but then they opened the fridge from like uh, six to six i mean that six is a, that is definitely a solution um, and, and, and so all of this i i think there's a lot of things that can be done case by case but the problem here is that you risk getting to charity and i think there's a big risk and so i think that's the fine line Okay, Sorry. thanks so much, Ernst. And Mike, do you wanna, I saw your comment in the in the chat. Do you wanna pop in? Yeah, thank you. I, I don't want to like overtake everybody else. So I'll try to keep it as brief as I can. Uh, in terms of possible solutions, something we did was we tried to coordinate better our larger food donation drop-offs so that we have volunteers on site that are able to distribute things as equitably as possible. Um, we also tried to host food drives on days where we knew we were getting large amounts of food. I know every fridge is different and every fridge runs off of volunteers. And believe me, I know it's not easy to find volunteers to be able to help. But I found that that was one way that resolved some of the issues where people would get upset if somebody is taking 20 of a particular item and they're unable to get it. Um, so that's one possible solution. Uh, I like the idea of limiting the hours too. Uh, that may not be possible for everyone depending on their site. Um, but if you are able to do that, I think that would work. Also to uh, the point, and two people mentioned it about stealing, you can't steal something that's free. And that's something that I have been trying to stress to people that have mentioned to me, oh, this person's stealing, this person's stealing. It's all free. So like, I don't understand the concept of someone thinking that someone is stealing something that's free. Um, that's just, that's something that still sticks in my head whenever I hear it. Um, not to like get on anybody's case in the chat because obviously we're all working towards a great purpose and great goals here. Um, but that's a mindset that I've noticed within the community and within even some of our own volunteers when they're at the bridge. Um, it's a it's a big issue. I mean, it's a very big issue because Jennifer just said that two cars are coming and they're emptying the fridge of everything in the fridge and pantry. And we have the same belief that it's a, it's free. Like once you donate, it's free. So it's a gift. So you can't steal a gift. Um, does and anyone it, go ahead? The idea of policing. And that was something yeah. that we've thought for a long time. A lot of the original people didn't want to police the food when it came in but it led to those problems and that led to the racist incidents that led to physical violence. And right. so we had to curtail that or else it was just gonna continue to escalate to the point where police had to get involved and we were gonna be shut down. Right. So, so I think you have to have some form of policing and I don't mean from the actual police, I mean from the volunteers that run the whole thing. Certain things cannot be allowed. And if you have people that are doing certain like criminal acts, stalking, assaulting people. We have banned people from going to the fridge that have had incidents with volunteers or other communities. Um, and again, it's all volunteer driven, so it's not perfect. But if we have a volunteer there and this person shows up, we ask them, and if they're comfortable doing it, we ask them to tell the person that they can't access the fridge today. If they're right. uncomfortable doing it, then they can just let them access the fridge. Right. But that's thing that we're trying and again i'm sorry for talking too much no not at all but ernst i just want to make sure that you're looking at the comments because leah has just written what i was going to say is we agreed that if somebody's selling the food from the fridge they might need diabetes medication for their child we don't know why they are doing it and there comes a point where you just have to believe in the good um and it is upsetting 
um, Aaron said it's upset. It is very upsetting. But if anyone has any solutions, and Nicole, I see your hand is raised. Do you want to jump in? Um, yeah, I just want to mention that, like, um, what I have been trying to do is when I drop off food, um, I would mention to everyone is like sharing is caring. Please, you know, don't take everything there. You know, you guys are all waiting for food, um, and then I don't want anybody fighting. And you know, we're all here to care for each other. And I think like. You know, whenever I drop off, when I say that, people tend to be like friendlier and not like try to like hit everybody, try to get more food. Um, so I think like if all of the volunteer just kind of maybe like remind people in a very nice way, like to share, I think that helps a little bit too. Obviously, it's not going to help with people like just hauling and selling, but I know like sometimes, you know, like even one guest would like take most of it, even though there are people lining up. So um, yeah, maybe that works. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Rachel? Yeah, I kind of want to echo uh, what Nicole is saying. And actually, I just saw a comment in the chat from uh, Dave that, um, yes, when I volunteered with West End, when we would get really large donations, if, if people have storage capacity, that's usually the main issue. Um, but that is another way to kind of curtail hoarding is to um, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like. Like stagger. Stagger, stagger, yes, thank you. Um, stagger the filling of the fridge because sometimes if a fridge goes from really, really full to empty really quick, that can encourage hoarding behavior. That can make people think the food's not gonna last, it's gonna disappear really quick. And sometimes there's no way to avoid that. But um, if often that's a matter of like, just um, coordinating within the community of volunteers, seeing who has room to host, um, or if you have, if you're part of a larger organization, like running through a church, uh, that can be really helpful. But I, I also wanted to comment a bit on the, um, the matter of policing. I know it's not necessarily actual police. I think it could be helpful to move from that mindset to one of more community accountability, because I think even the term policing can put people in a a mind frame that leads to power imbalances and that can escalate things and encourage hostility between volunteers and the people who will be coming to the fridge because we we don't know where they're coming from and we don't necessarily know why people might be acting the way they are. Thank you, Rachel. Sarita? I raised my hand before I heard uh, Nicole and Rachel talk, but basically echoing the same thing. We do have, we, we, are in a position where we are able to take large donations and split them up because um, our fridge and pantry is in front of our, our restaurant. So I have fridge space and I have a pantry space inside for us to split things up. So that really does help. Uh, we get fresh, because everyone who utilizes the fridge knows when the food is coming, right? Because we're picking up from the same businesses daily where we are getting fresh food deliveries pretty much the same time every week. Um, so being able to split up and divide really uh, helps because then it does take that layer of it's stressful it's stressful talking to people like you don't want to tell people to take less like that's something that we shouldn't be doing right this is we don't know people's scenarios so if we can spread it out that way it's great um i think also that that mindset sometimes just takes time for people to adjust to you know we're, we're coming upon a year anniversary of our fridge which is great and we're very excited about it. i've seen an evolution um definitely on our facebook page where we will you know people used to post a lot of angry things about saying people are stealing from the fridge and we would get that regularly and then it's a downward spiral spiral right and then before you know people aren't going to donate to the fridge because they feel like people are quote unquote stealing from it and every time a post like that came up um diane you know she had she commented right away or now like Edie and I will do that just kind of to to shift and have people think of it through a different or see it through a different lens and it's I think that's going to be an ongoing thing and it takes time and we can't expect people and overnight to change about that it's just informing them and I and seeing what we see like as a fridge that operates 24 7 and my employees see this fridge like 18 hours a day I can only explain to people what we see and how much it's getting used in such a good way. Whereas there's a lot of people who will focus on this, like what 0.2% of negative negativity around it. So I think it's just, again, it's a matter of like 
giving information to people that you have to inform them of what's actually happening at the fridge. Thanks, Sarita. So I just want to get to a couple things in the chat. Gaylene, I saw your comment. Um, I don't know that there is a website that has all the fridges on it, but Fridge has probably the best. They have a lot of, I think they have a couple hundred fridges um, on a map. So it's F-R-E-E-D-G-E. -E -E. um, check that out. And Dave, about consciously setting aside part of a large donation, we do at East Village Fridge, I do a large delivery of fruits and vegetables every week. And the person who gets them, she will generally hold some aside so we can stagger it. Um, Joseph, we have found it's best not to have standard times for delivery because that does make the issue of people loitering, which somebody, I think Mike Z said they have a problem with. If people know the exact time stuff's going to be there, then you can have people who will start to loiter. So we actually prefer, some of our stuff has to be set because of restaurants or bakeries closing, but we try to stagger it so that people don't know when it's going to be there. Um, <clears throat> I also have another question regarding that though. Um, sure. On the topic earlier that they were speaking on about how, um, well, like from what I'm thinking about, like if I know Ernst earlier was talking about how there was a stabbing at one point, and, and, and how if the volunteers are present when the food gets distributed, there's much less likelihood for um, unwatched or unseen crime to occur at the fridges. So I was just a little curious on people's philosophy on that. Like if the, if the volunteers are there, like there's less likelihood for people to like hurt others, it seems like. Before anyone answers, I just want to jump in really quick. Please, anyone who's new to fridges, don't think that like all they're doing is being vandalized and people stealing. It is 99% of people who are at home cooking food and like it's, it's, but it's these small percentages are creating huge problems. Um, I do want to talk, Mike and Nicole, did you just not lower your hand or did you guys have something you wanted to contribute? Okay, Rachel. Sorry to lower my hand sorry that's okay rachel did you want to jump in sorry uh yes i did but i actually just uh forgot what i was about to say so that's I okay just <laughs> yeah just just raise your hand again, but I want to jump in too. And I think Sarita is going to lead us off with not just having problems with the public. What do you do with problem volunteers? Right. So I want to begin again saying that our volunteers, like 99.9% .9 of our volunteers are amazing and awesome. And we appreciate them and couldn't do it without them. Um, but we have had like a, a handful of people who, uh, who've been, trying to set their own rules for the fridge, I guess. And Leah, I think you and I, we had the same person months ago uh, and, and that's fine. She actually, well, not fine, but she caused a problem for a couple of fridges and now doesn't seem to be volunteering. I don't think for any of them. Uh, but as of late, I had, uh, I have a volunteer. We have a volunteer who um, she is just, she's trying to just basically be in charge of the fridge 24 seven. Like she's there almost seven days a week when she's not in front of the fridge, she's standing inside of my restaurant. Um, she runs around like, you know, she's been, I've had to talk to her many times so she'll come right into our, like into the employee area. She'll run downstairs. She'll do things that she's not authorized to do and talk, you know, kind of be aggressive with people who are trying to wait for things in the fridge and, and doing her own kind of policing as to who gets what. And, you know, she's gotten a little bit better, but it was really difficult at first because it was one of those things where you really appreciate a volunteer, but then they, you know, and you say yes to one thing. And the next thing you know, this one woman is just pushing for more and more and more and, and trying to do things her own way and was not even on our WhatsApp. I didn't realize at first that she wasn't even on our WhatsApp group. So I kind of call her like she's our rogue volunteer. Um, she does do some really great things, but it's it's tough. Uh, and I just want to know if anyone else has had issues in this or how they dealt with that. Um, again, like I've had to talk to her. My husband's had to talk to her many times. I've told my staff because I know these guys are super nice and they will probably just let her do what she wants. I'm like, listen, you, can, you know, she can't just, she's not the person in charge of this fridge. This is a community fridge. So it just gets to be a little bit difficult. So if anyone has any suggestions or can share something that's happened on that, their end, I'd really appreciate it. 
Yeah, and Eric, your hand your hand was up and then it went down. Did you have something you wanted to? Uh, it was on the old topic, so I'll wait till we finish oh, this question. <laughs> okay, I'll come back to you. Mike? Mike, is your hand just up? Sorry, sorry. I couldn't figure out the mute button. <laughs> we had similar issues with a volunteer and we had to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with that person and just make sure that we're reiterating what the whole mission of the fridge is, what our purpose is, what our goals are, what we want to achieve. And we found that just through consistent interactions with this person that that kind of curtailed the behavior. Um, I don't know if that's possible. Again, all fridges are run off of volunteers and training has not been something that has been, I think, commonly done with other fridges in their staff. Maybe I'm wrong. That's just something that we recently were doing. Um, so yeah, I would just maybe try to spend as much one-on-one -on -one time with the person as you can. And if maybe that's not working, then just have it, tell them that they need to just spend less time at the fridge. Thanks, Mike. Eric, you wanna jump in now? Um, yeah, my thing was more about the, the stealing of food uh, mm -hmm. and the policing of things. Mm -hmm. And so I'm with the Love Fish Chicago. So we're a little bit over a year old now. And one of the things I've been doing the past year is I do um, building the structures, but also delivering food is just talking to people. It's amazing to hear those stories. And the issue around like kind of the, the stealing of food, right? Where I always feel like that's an oppor another opportunity once you find out those stories. So Two of the big things are sometimes those people are taking reselling that food, but to other people for different reasons. Maybe the fridges aren't um, accessible to some people, right? In terms of um, ADA accessibility, or may maybe they're carting it off to another place to sell it because they can't get to that fridge. Let's just know we need to put a new fridge somewhere else. But to hear those stories, but also the idea of like the scarcity mindset too. So, um, um, and some of the conversation I have with you, we don't care if you resell the food like at all. Our, my problem, our problem is, is most of the time people know that the food is free, so they're not going to buy it from you. So you're wasting food, right? So having that conversation, we don't care if you steal it, do not waste it because we're trying to rescue food. So having that conversation or the biggest thing is just kind of showing up when people are taking the food and like, you know, take more, right? The internet scarcity mindset usually solves the problem. And that's easier said than done, but that seems to be the root of the problem with the taking and hoarding the food. Those are great suggestions. Thank you so much. Frank, I see your hands up. Yes, guys, thank you. Just want to piggyback on what you guys are saying. Uh, Frank Gonzalez here, Lowy Sida, Unity Fridge on East 9th Street and Avenue B as in boy, Alphabet City, downtown Manhattan. And uh, pretty much it's, uh, yeah, we're in the process of getting a new refrigerator, it was vandalized, but the food comes in, it goes out, it's a no judgment zone there's people taking the food going up the block on 14th street which is a, a huge like just uh problem going on right now so i just wanted to share that thank you thanks frank so i want to get to aaron's um comment because it ties in with this and I, I hope she's she might have left but i'll make her watch the the video so she said lafayette community fridge um, has been making big community meals over the last few weeks and they dropped 40 or so off on Fridays and they're gone within an hour. They think something sketchy is going on, possibly with the host. So they don't want to police anyone, but they notice it happens every time that they stock it. Um, and they're getting messages from people around the corner that said, as soon as they post that there's food there, everything's gone. So they are concerned that the host might be involved with the food coming out. Um, any thoughts or advice on how to go forward and address this issue? Now, I know that we've just been talking about this issue in general, but what do you do if, let's say, Sarita, who hosts these village fridge, starts stealing, not stealing, starts, <laughs> but what, 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 you know, does anyone have any comments or suggestions on if a host is taking food from the fridge? Jennifer? So... Did I mute myself? Okay. You're okay. So um, we are in a parking lot of a very generous dry cleaner and um, his employees were 
very generously taking whatever they could get like on a daily basis from the fridge. And so they have the right to do that. Um, at the same point, other people were wanting stuff and there was nothing left. So we were trying to balance that a little bit carefully and very like mindful that we're in this man's space, right? You know, and we don't want to upset his employees and we also think they have a right to the food. So um, we just gently reminded them that it's for everybody and we want to make sure there's enough to kind of go around um, they could take. We have no problem with that, but just take what they need and that was, you know, and then leave the rest kind of thing. That's, that's, and it, it seems, it seems better. Great. Thanks. Frank, your hand is still up. Did you have something else you wanted to say or can we lower it? Um, and as we wait for him, let's get to the next one. So the next one is, it's another question about volunteers. There's burnout, the reliability of volunteers. Um, do you guys feel that you still have the same involvement that you did during the height of pandemic? And if not, what are you doing? And then what can be done to excite volunteers to want to stay and be part of it and not burn out, et cetera? The floor is open. I'm going to call on someone. Um, I'll, I can, I mean, Sarita and I were just talking about this, but, you know, we uh, definitely at the height of the pandemic, uh, you know, like last year, there were a lot of tons of volunteers, tons of people who are like, yeah, I'll pick up every Friday evening. Uh, and, you know, now that things are opening up and people want to do other things on Friday evening, totally understandable. People should for sure be going out, living their lives safely. But, um, you know, we both were talking about how, you know, there's two or three volunteers who are doing really everything uh, just, you know, and they're volunteering for all of it, but at the same, and it's great because it's like, you know, someone has to pick it up and if they want to pick it up, that's awesome. But, you know, some of these people are picking up every single day. We're also aware that, you know, they have kids, jobs, other lives. And we, you know, we, we want to take, you want, we want to make sure that everyone's everyone's taken care of you know not just the guests for sure the volunteers all work so hard and we're trying to figure out how to like protect everyone but while still building the team and you know still being able to like hype everyone up and get people excited to keep saving food and feeding people Katie, do you want to jump in yeah um one thing we decided to do was to start doing some volunteer events because um i think the thing with volunteering at these fridges is that um it's kind of disconnected, you know, unless you run into somebody there um, or you run into some of the people taking the food, some of whom aren't very nice or, or you know, di difficult. Um, it, it's a little bit um, of a, uh, you don't get a lot back as a volunteer sometimes. And so um, I wanted to really, um, and I think Diane, you had made this point that, a lot of this is for the volunteers as well, especially during the pandemic where people were so isolated. Um, so we, we've actually, um, we had one event um, in the East River Park, and then we had another event um, at the wonderful Lasada um, Community Fridge where they, they have, um, the, their hosting church has a beautiful court, courtyard. Um, so I think that's a great way to kind of team build as well. Does anyone else want to jump in? Okay, so next question. So do any of you know of any fridges that have closed and the reasons why, or have you thought about stopping yours? Like, I'd love to have a discussion about the future. Um, Rachel, do you wanna jump in and start? Yeah, so unfortunately the first fridge that I started volunteering with did close and we had actually talked a bit about the problems it was facing at the last uh, community fridge chat. Um, there was a lot of unfortunate pushback from the public in the neighborhood it was in uh, because there were a lot of, uh, you know, like unsheltered people who were coming to, you know, make use of the fridge, which is great. That's one of the reasons why it's there. Um, but the neighborhood was a very wealthy white neighborhood and people were uncomfortable with those people's presence and they started harassing the church, which was the host, and the, the clergy of the church, and the volunteers, and the people who were coming to make use of the fridge were all getting harassed by a very vocal minority within the community, and it ultimately led to the shutdown of the fridge, 
And so far that Fridge has not been able to find a new host. Um, I'm a little out of the loop on what the goings on are with that. But I, I think that, you know, during the, the height of the pandemic, there was a bit of people weren't paying as much attention to what was going on with the fridges. Everyone was kind of very involved in their own lives. And now that a lot of things are opening up, there's a lot more just people paying attention. There's been, especially here in New York City, a large crackdown from um, the health department in various fridges that I've, I've heard of. So that's like two different challenges that I've seen fridges facing. And I'm not, other than a lot more outreach, I'm not really sure what the solutions are. So Rachel, can I ask, because this was my thing at the beginning about the health department cracking down. Do you know exactly what they're doing? Like, are they asking for licenses or something? I, unfortunately, I don't know. I can ask around, but um, I think it's more, uh, and I've been issuing fines and I think, you know, kind of telling people like if, if it continues, it would have to shut down. Um, I'm not sure about the licensing issue though. Okay, Sarita. You're muted, Sarita. Yeah, it takes me a minute. Me too. Um, <laughs> right, it shouldn't, it shouldn't by now. <laughs> so I did hear recently, I don't know if anyone else in New York knew, knows about this, uh, that there, there was a really active fridge on Grand Street in front of Abrams Art Center. I had heard that that's closed down now. Uh, and I, again, it was one of those ones that had, it had a very large fridge and like uh, metro shelving for pantry use. And it was very, like one of the earlier fridges, I believe in New York City and very active. So I'm not sure what happened there. I know there's another fridge close by at Essex Market, but it was, I, I mean, when I found that out, I was, I was quite sad about it, knowing how much traffic it, it gets. Um, as far as like our fridge, it, it's, I, I'd be hard pressed to, to close it when you see how many people are using it. I just feel like our usage has gotten more over the, like, it seemed like a lot at the beginning, it's even more now a year later. It just more of, okay, how, how is this going to move going forward knowing the food, the disparity in our community, right? And obviously around the country and around the world as far as, as food food availability and accessibility goes. I mean, I think we had talked about this lot in the last conversation that our fridges were kind of, you know, they're a social experiment and they're a band-aid to a much larger problem. So I think right now I can't imagine closing it, but um, the fact that, you know, ours is in front of our restaurant and you're, and I'm now hearing about this health department thing, like, is this something now the city is going to start enforcing? I guess it's yet to, to be seen, but that's where we stand right now. Yeah, Sarita, I don't know if you want to stay in touch with Rachel in case she can find something out just to see, because it could be a huge yeah. problem. And I was worried that when the pandemic sort of slowed down a bit, the health department would get weird about it. Um, so this this is a related question. Do I have any of you thought about, because of burnout and because the, it is not easy to run a fridge. It really isn't. I mean, Sarita and Edie, I give them so much credit because they do so much work. But has anyone thought about transition plans? Like, like if a founder, like I moved from New York City to New Mexico. I'm lucky because Edie and Sarita were co-founders and they're still there. You know, I'm still minimally involved, but not like I used to be. But have any of you come across that? Have you resolved it? Have you thought about the future of your fridge? Nobody, we're all thinking about today. Mike says, I don't know how sustainable the model is for fridges. I agree with you because it's all unpaid and volunteer. And, and since the disparity has become so obvious with fridges, like in food, um, and the fact that everybody's volunteers, I think it's a little disheartening that it's all volunteers who are working to help feed their neighborhood. Ernst, please jump in. I think that all the problems that we've been talking about, like abusing and, and having volunteers or not, or fridges getting shut down. By the way, we have we had many fridges get got shut down for like because of health inspectors or you know city officials or whoever it is right it's not really because of the law or because of the code it's because someone as you said um someone in the community didn't want the fridge because they are afraid of the uh, line of homeless or whatever and they call the 
the health inspectors or whoever they think about coming, uh, calling in, the, those, those authorities would use sometimes whatever, you know, article in the food code. Right. So I think um, the, the, the main issue is that we are trying to solve systemic problems with a fridge. And I think the fridge doesn't do that. I think what the fridge does best is to create, commu- obviously you can share a lot of food and we have examples uh, of fridges that do have a huge flow of food. And then that's not, that is not uh, uh, to be ignored, right? Uh, but I think we are dealing with systemic things. And you, when we are doing these things in our, with, with a group of volunteers of 15 or 30 volunteers, we are still you know, dealing with a systemic thing that is huge. And uh, food waste doesn't exist, uh, you know, exists because of the, the, this food that goes to waste is too cheap for these people to save it from going to waste. And other people who don't have enough food to get, don't have enough money to get food, that food is too expensive. So I think the solutions that we're talking about, and I think ties into the future, is that we have to get out of the fridge. Uh, we have to move beyond it. And I think there are many, many other examples of other sorts of mutual aid that actually can help fridges, um, um, which is like, and they've been around and they're not as sexy. I think that the, the fridges have been, you know, popping up in the past year with the pandemic because it's something that people say, oh, this kind of new is like a little strange that you have like this thing in the street and then everybody kind of like trust each other. And like, actually that thing's not really, the, the ch- trust problem or these things that we have, all of the problems that we're talking about, uh, you know, like people getting too much food or, you know, these things is because we don't have a community organization in all levels, right? So I think this is where we need to go. And at least that's what I've been trying to do is connecting with anybody that is doing other sorts of mutual aid. And it's I think you guys in New York are also probably doing the same thing. And I've seen a lot of examples of that. Um, but like community... Uh, farming, food forests, or, or or any any other sort of like uh, community organization, and like when you say I'm going to reach out to a social worker, you can have uh, uh, you know the social workers sometimes. I'm not saying we can all do the works of social worker, but w- what is lacking sometimes for a, a person that is um, you know going through a hard time is not a social worker; it's just someone to give them attention, someone to talk to them, for example. And I, I think. Eric was saying that like some folks uh, were trying to reinvent the wheel and then recreate uh, things that already existed. And, and, and sometimes I think that the reason for that is because the things that already exist don't really, if they're running in a charity model, they don't really f- uh, serve the community because the community doesn't want to have, you know, someone in distress, doesn't want to have some trained social worker to come and tell them what to do. Um, and, and I don't think these problems are easy to solve, and I think they're all hard, but I think the way forward is to, uh, you know, go beyond the fridge and, and think, like, how can this fridge be connected to uh, other sorts of mutual aid and how the fridge can help, right, those other mutual aid uh, um, um, initiatives and, 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 and be helped, right? How, how we can, I think that women in... in um, Dallas, I know if you guys uh, in Fort Worth uh, heard, is the Funky Town Fridge. Uh, she talks about the the Fridge Hive, right? I know if you guys uh, see her, and then she always like Fridge Hive. I think that's what it is. I think that's the solution. Is the Fridge Hive is what we are doing right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna. I, I keep... think I think your points are extremely valuable, and thank you so much for that. I just. I work on a program called Plan Eat Share and food forests are part of it. There are people that are doing it. It is hard to run a fridge, let alone then plan a food forest and do all this other stuff. I, I do agree though, that the future of fridges, like I thought getting community gardens to donate a certain amount. I think Edie had put in here that City Harvest is coming up with a program that the city of New York puts food in fridges. I think that it's a matter of getting volunteers who are going to come in, who are going to say, okay, I'll be the contact between your fridge and a food forest or something like that. You're bringing, but I don't think the people focused just on the fridge can do it all. It's, it's, we're not getting paid. And that's where it gets like, 
it, it, and it is a Band-Aid. I think we all realize that this is a stopgap Band-Aid solution, which is absolutely necessary. And fridges feed people that food pantries don't and that people that don't get to it. So I think it's something we should keep talking about. And I'm interested to see what other fridges do, like how they are expanding beyond just a fridge. I, I just think with the volunteer issue, it's tough. But Nicole, do you want to jump in? Um, yeah, I just want to mention that I think um, the struggle is really to get um, volunteer to like maybe step up and do more managing duties because I think most of our volunteers, they just want to pick up when they can pick up. <laughs> and um, that's it. So I think a lot of these other programs are like connecting with other mutual aids efforts. Like, again, it takes a lot of time and effort and, you know, yeah. Leah cannot do it all. Like I try my best to help, but, you know, we, at the end of the day, like we don't get paid, we all have our lives. Um, I think this, the struggle is really to where do we find volunteers? There are more into kind of expanding their duties and like do more instead of just like picking up or like tidying the fridge and things like that. Thank you. Dave, do you want to tell us what you just wrote in the chat? I think, I think you have a good point. Well, it may be a good point, but it is um, still in early days in, in my thinking. The um, most uh, organizations go through cycles where they have to decide how much they, whether they want to kind of stay in the current mode or the current model, or they want to invest in institutional practices and institutional ways of doing things. And in this case, um, we're still in very early days, I guess about roughly a year for most of the fridges. Um, and we, we've talked about the uh, uh, burnout with volunteers. We've talked about community outreach and community acceptance uh, of the fridge. We've, um, we, I'm thinking that we probably need to attract more donations from a broader swath of, of donators in the community. Um, and so to accomplish this, one of the things that I'm thinking about, and we'll talk to our others that are fridge about, is how do we um, uh, create a, both a marketing and outreach or incorporate marketing and outreach more system, uh, systematically to all of the stakeholders so that um, we have a, a way of attracting a, we have a story to attract a steady stream of volunteers and refresh the volunteer base, that we have a story to take to uh, donators, uh, that we have a story to take to the community so that we get more community support or sustained community support for the fridge uh, through good times and bad. Uh, but it's it, it sounds like we're at that, uh, that many people here are at that same place where Ooh, are we going to keep the current model and what happens to the future of the fridge? Uh, likely pretty uneven results. Um, or do we invest in institutionalizing a few things so that we can leverage it? So thinking about having a web presence that has some data on it that shows progress, uh, that same data could be used for marketing materials or discussions with volunteer ca candidates with uh, with donators, et cetera. So excuse, apologies for the um, kind of disorganized. No, God, not at all. But I do think the thing with the fridges is they are anti-institutionalization. So I think when you say that word, some people would be like, whoa. Um, I think fridge, I think there's another, fridge is, because some people think community fridges are fridges and they're not. Fridges are a group of fridges under the fridge banner. I think they are collecting some data on their fridges. So I, I personally would like to see a hybrid where anybody with a fridge can do what they wanna do. And then if people wanna make it a little more formal, that's great. What I'm trying to do, what I think is important with these Zooms is that we're coming with, up with ideas that we can then document and we can pass on, or we can help each other you know, with, with issues with our fridge because it is still such a new thing. Um, and I just, uh, Christian, I didn't know if you wanted to jump in and actually, you know, just, just speak what you're saying about agreeing with Ernst. I agree with you about, we need to look at it systemically. Again, fridges popped up just to help feed people. Like it was an emergency situation. 
Um, and this goes into the future of fridges. Like, will they become more institutionalized? That scares me a little. When we first started out, there were people who contacted us who wanted to make apps, who wanted to like track, and they were marketing companies. And we were like, no, no, we don't collect data. No, it's anonymous. So I think that's going to be a bigger discussion going down the road. I mean, let yeah, me just totally say that collecting data doesn't necessarily mean you lose anonymity. And I'll leave it at that. Correct. No, correct. Christian, no, Christian, please. Um, no, I was going to say, and honestly, I don't have a ton of experience with community fridges specifically, but I think um, my comment was just coming more from the kind of nonprofit world and sort of community um, work world in general is that um, at, there, there's so much need and it's so easy for and so important to get boots on the ground and just feed people and just get work done. Um, but if that also isn't couple and it's so hard to find the balance between the time, you know, that's a, a, a constant challenge. Um, but if we don't make the time to advocate or or raise these issues to higher levels, I mean, as, as much as sometimes it falls on deaf ears and with elected officials or whoever, um, I just worry that um, we'll continue to be band-aids forever. Um, yes. And yes. So uh, all that to say, just um, as as challenging as it is, I think it's important to to look broader um, and to to advocate when possible for for legislation or um, rule zoning changes, rule changes, um, things, lots of things of that nature. And I think that's that brings up a good point, and maybe we can talk about this next time because I do want to wrap up. I have one last question, but. Um, do we just want to keep it a Band-Aid? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong. I think hunger, unfortunately, is going to be around for a while. Or do we think the all-volunteer fridge movement has the energy to take on systemic change and take on legislation? I'm not saying we can't, but I would love to sort of next time we all meet, maybe dive into that a bit more. Um, the last question I have, and anyone is free to, to jump in if you have something, um, and this is a <laughs> this is a simple but not so simple one that I think Sarita brought up. But drivers for fridges, do any of you have drivers that pick up food? We have the ability to pick up food from a food bank in Brooklyn, I think five days a week and bring it to the fridge, but we don't have drivers. So does any has anyone dealt with that or has suggestions? Ubers don't work. So um, I feel like in New York City at least, like you gotta find the moms. <laughs> um, those are the, uh, I mean, we actually, I have a car. I mean, I, we borrow my parents' car, which is very, very nice of them. But, uh, it, all of our drivers are, are, are the moms. Uh, I don't know. That's just, that's just my two cents. <laughs> They're the ones who have the cars in New York. At and least. do they go like out to Brooklyn? Um, so we've had some go to, to New Jersey, actually. Um, Brooklyn, we had, yeah, a couple of times. It's well, you know, you also have to get moms who have flexible jobs. So it is a very niche person, at least for us. It's it's like a lot of moms who are working from home or are stay at home moms that are able to do it. Um, and that's I know that's a very, very specific, maybe even to Chelsea. Uh, but I mean, New York City is, I'm sure there's plenty of people here, you know, there's people in Boston and like other places that I'm like, I'm sure it's much easier for them to get a driver. But for us, even even like, even me who has the car, it's like, sometimes we don't want to go get the food because we don't want to give up our parking right. spot. <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, I don't want to give up this parking spot. Otherwise I'll be driving around for like two hours looking for parking. So I don't know what other fridges do. I think some do use Uber to pick up food which i we have never done that so yeah and i think it depends on where you live because maddie said that their planned donations are delivered by volunteers with their own vehicles and manhattan like really large cities most people don't have vehicles um but just as anyone else have anything and keith i just want to say thank you for joining us you said you were informational only so i just want to i appreciate you staying through the whole thing and i hope you'll start a fridge Oh, that would be ambitious, but <laughs> happy to learn now. Appreciate everyone sharing what they know. Cargo bikes. Yeah, that's that's a good idea, Ernst. Okay, so, oh, Rachel, sorry, didn't see your hand. Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I agree with Leah when I was um, 
volunteering with uh, West End, I think it was mostly moms who were the other drivers. I'm a bit of an outlier in that I have, I've been lucky enough to have a pretty flexible schedule and access to my parents' car uh, to be a driver. I will say that um, for me, and I think for other people who have access to cars in, in major cities, it is beneficial to have um, very reliable schedules to know like, okay, I'm picking up, like I can commit to what I can commit to Wednesday mornings and that's when I will be able to drive. I think it's when, unfortunately it's when there's like last minute rescues that are the hardest for drivers. Mm. Um, I might just be speaking for myself because it, it can be hard to know like when I'll be able to access the car, when I'll be able to, to park it again. Um, so I can't always, you know, drop everything and, and do a pickup, but if it's very like scheduled and it sounds like the, the Brooklyn opportunity you're talking about would be something like that, where it's a, a known date and time and uh, routine. I think that that's helpful for drivers. Mm. Um, so Maddie said that there's a mutual aid group in Seattle that delivers food to community fridges. I mean, that's an idea too, if anyone has a local mutual aid group to see if they could post out and find a driver. Um, Edie, do you want to, she said electric scooter, that's hard for Brooklyn, but <laughs> do you want to verbally say what you just wrote in the chat? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, um, I think it was a volunteer from, uh, again, the other fridge, who um, Lazada fridge, who donated a bike, uh, this sort of scooter. Um, I'm actually trying to find a link to the exact one. Um, it's called a, a Gillian, Leon. Um, and the, the one that we have has a basket. Um, and the, our issue, of course, was figuring out where to store it, but it does fold. Um, so evidently, uh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna keep it at a, the Sixth Street Community Center is the idea. Um, because, you know, a lot of our pickups, we do have carts and that kind of thing, but, you know, dragging 120 bagels through the streets of New York is, <laughs> can be challenging. Um, and, um, so that's just one idea that people might be interested in. Great, Keith. Do people donate access to their, just their vehicle, not necessarily availability to drive, but willingness to share their vehicle with volunteers? It's pretty extreme, but I, I don't, I'm happy to drive, don't have a car, but you know, I'm fairly flexible, but I just, I don't know whether that's a thing, whether people say, hey. Uh, <laughs> I would be concerned just with insurance, but I don't know. I think that's why else they'd have their, their own insurance would cover that. I'm fairly confident in saying that you're allowed to loan your car to people and have it still be covered, for, regardless of that individual's insurance cover. I, I could see being reluctant to do it when I've had car, <laughs> when I had a car, but I just don't know whether that happens. You know yeah. what I would say? Cause I gotta be honest. I just got my first car ever in my life and I'm old. Uh, I would not let anyone else drive it. And maybe mm -hmm. if I was in it, but what I would be willing to do is have you get over like to Br Brooklyn's our big thing. Cause you need a car, but, but if you know, you could pick up and then Uber and then we re reimburse for the Uber like that type of thing, I think people would be more comfortable I'd be with. fine doing that as well. I mean, that's that's reasonable. I was just curious. The scooter donation sounds great. Where are you located? I'm East Village on 7th. Hey, Sarita. I Beauty. already sent her a direct We're message. talking on the chat. <laughs> okay, Don't the Brooklyn, worry. the the food, we got a food bank. Okay, we got we got the funds. Todd, I see your hands up. Okay, no, I was just going to say, uh, we, I, I even though I have a car, I've actually reached out to somebody who has a van when we've had a bigger pickup. And they've been, so I think I would not discourage people from feeling people out. Mm. Um, I, I think, you know, so if you have people that are just like, hey, you know, it's an older vehicle. I don't mind lending it out. I'm, you know, as long as you assure me you're a good driver, et cetera. So I, I wouldn't discourage people from trying and reaching out to see if people are, are willing to do that. Good point. That's just me because I've never had a car before, you know, a little possessive right now. But anyway, okay. Does anyone else, please just say hi if you want. Like anyone else have a question, a comment, anything you want to say? Hi, yes, I'm just, uh, my name's Sasha, so I'm just on the call for information. Um, but I do have a question out of curiosity. Has anyone considered 
partnering with like restaurants in the surrounding areas because they already had the vehicles to do operations and um, food deliveries. I kind of feel like, so our fridge is, I would say it's all restaurants and bakeries and uh, businesses. And I, we try to, we try to have them not do anything. Like we, we want to make it easy for them because it is hard for businesses to donate to a lot of places actually. And we try to do as much work for them as possible. Like, you know, right. some places will give us like bags of bread and like, if they can individually wrap it, that's awesome. But if not, we want them to know like, it's okay, we'll still take it and it'll still go somewhere good. So kind of, I think, well, also in New York City, I'm sure no one will be, would be able to do that because of the car thing, but we, we actively try to have the donors do as little as possible. Cause I think, I, a big, I think a big obstacle is that like, you know, to pay someone on like on their side to do that is a little, is mm -hmm. that asking like a little much. Right, I understand. Okay, thank you. And I just wanted to jump in, Lexi, yes, all of you will receive the recording of this. Everybody who registered for this one and the previous one will get a copy of the recording, assuming I did this properly. Um, and then there's another, oh, uh, of note, people in the city. So Rachel said that people in the Bronx, they get rent a U-Haul for large pickups. They split it amongst the fridges, throwing that out there for the East Village community fridge people. Leah, I'm sure Leah would go in. Anyway, so I think that's a great idea is to get a group of, or even if it's a minivan, it doesn't have to be a U-Haul, but that would be great. So anyway, so anyone else? And Todd and Keith, I don't know if your hands are just still up or if you wanna can jump in. Okay, so I'm assuming that you just, so I have no final words of wisdom except thank you everyone, what you're doing I'm sure you all know this, you're helping way more people than you probably realize, not just the people getting the food, but the volunteers also. I mean, the one thing I found is I felt so disconnected um, when COVID hit that the community fridge probably saved my life. And I'm not joking. I met so many people, volunteers and people getting food that I loved going up there. So um, I hope you all feel the same. And I thank you so much. And Let's do this again, maybe in two or three months, if everyone's okay with that. Okay, thanks all. Bye, give me like a day. It'll be like within 24 hours, I'll send this out. Thank you. Thank you.